run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. We got a series. Happy Monday morning from Los Angeles. This is a run it back. My lovely co-host. I start as always on my right with Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons. Okay, and Eddie Gonzalez on the end. Do you want to explain uh, who styled you today? Or it's you want... usually hot in studio, so I have shorts on. Give me a break. <laughs> Pizza. Do you have shoes on too or not? I don't have he shoes on either. I'm happy we've established this now. <laughs> yeah. I know now I'm dressing know. But you have a pen. I and do. so we are destined ready to go. for greatness. Uh, guys, we do have a series. <laughs> Just when you thought it was over. I mean, who really thought it was over? But the Heat outscore the Nuggets in the fourth quarter. Big fourth quarter. They win this one by three. Butler, 21, four and nine. Vincent, 23. Bam, who had to do a lot of post-game interviews. Uh, 21, nine and four. First team, by the way, to steal home court from Denver in these here playoffs. Um, and it wasn't even one of those giant nights for Jimmy Butler in doing so, Chandler. So has your perception of the actual series changed at all? Yeah, it's changed because now it goes from the seven game series where everybody had Denver winning this, right? There were, and, and it's almost like the Nugget players even started believing that. If you looked at <laughs> Mike Malone last night talking about effort and, and the press conference of, of the NBA Finals is ridiculous. But now the Heat are looking at a five game series where they have home court advantage and it, it's, 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 for anybody to grab, right? And and Spo made a huge adjustment last night where he just keeps running his offensive sets. It's, it's, it's unpredictable. They can't really lock into one thing. He puts Kevin Love in the starting lineup. Uh, he throws in and mix and matches the zone defense, which which really gave them trouble. So I think it was a combination of things last night. But yeah, this this is, at least now, it's we got a competitive series and, and it's gonna get interesting. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to shoot 17 from 35 from three, they're going to be competitive. If they're going to make that amount of threes, and that's what they need, I think both games, both teams can look and say, hey, we didn't play perfect. We have room to improve. But that's the finals. It's competitive. Mm -hmm. You're playing the other best team in the league. Neither team is going to play a perfect game in this series. So you're going to have nights like that. You're going to have you're going to have to win when Jimmy isn't great. You're going to have to win when Jamal Murray isn't great. You're going to have to win when Michael Porter can't find his shot. And, and that's what both teams did. And we have a series, contrary to what all of us thought. It's not we a We have sweet. a series, and it's exciting to know that. Yeah, to me, the one thing that really stood out was Jimmy Butler down the stretch of the game. He was super clutch. His usage, his usage rate in game one, 17%. And then in game two, 27%. He didn't shoot the ball well the first three quarters of the game. But I think the way he finished was big time. And the more you have the ball in his hands and he's able to control the game, control the pace of the game, clearly he had the ball much more in game two. Nine assists last night was big time. And then Duncan Robinson, 10 points, yeah. four, four, uh, four or five from the field, two three-pointers. And I just think if Tyler Hero doesn't go down in game one against the Bucks. Does Duncan Robinson play ever? Uh -huh. Probably not. And so you have to give credit to him. He stayed ready. And, and he's done it before. I was there in the bubble in 2020. He had a big finals uh, run against the Lakers uh, in that series. And he's doing it again. So, yes, role, <laughs> opportunity, it all matters. <laughs> and Bam Adebayo, I think he, he, he got a little bit of flack during the Celtics series. Yeah. Um, but he's been an anchor for them all year. And no one can stop Nikola Jokic. But I think Bam Adebayo has done a good job of keeping the pressure on Jokic. Uh, on, a, on both ends of the floor, he's had two really monster games, and we'll see how they do going back to Miami. I love that you shout out to Duncan Robinson. Yeah, shout out to it's, out. A, <laughs> it's one thing seeing him knock down threes, but him doing this, getting Tough to the and then flexing. bodying and then flexing, I've never seen this. This is a finals Duncan Robinson who's showing up, and I'm super proud of him because this is the same guy we've talked about this before. He's been out of the rotation. I saw something with his contract. I don't know if this is real. Maybe you know or not that it's, uh, he had to play a certain amount of games or minutes for his contract to, to be fully guaranteed. And it, it seems like this kid's unfazed. And that's kind of what the story with a lot of these players. But yeah, Bam, the, the way he came out of the game last night, he was so aggressive. He was almost taking bad shots. It's he was like being he heard so the aggressive. Critiques. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's like, and so did the Nuggets players because they just looked like they were too cool for school and they thought the series was in the bag. And it's not, and it's far from over. But I love I love what Bam did. He came out, he would get defensive rebounds, he would go coast to coast, and he would make Jokic work. We know all, we all know how great he is offensively, but he was putting the pressure on him, just making him work, and it makes a huge difference throughout a game and throughout a series. If you want to know how great Bam has been, watch <laughs> the three minutes when Cody Zeller played against Jokic last oh, night. And Jokic looked oh, like <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain and Larry Bird <laughs> together. That tells you how great Bam has been. I know his numbers don't necessarily pop off the screen, 21 points, nine rebounds. 
but he was timely all night. He did the huge dunk late, which I, I thought that was the game. I was surprised the Nuggets made a run after that, after the and one dunk. Uh, he's been all over the place on defense. He's the reason they can play the zone they way, the way they do. He covers so much ground underneath the zone. He makes that work for them. And credit to Eric Spolster for stuff like you just said about Duncan Robinson. To have him in and out the lineup all year long, mostly out, and to be able to plug him in in the playoffs and for him to be able to come up big like that in the way he did, that's all testament to the culture they've built there, to the coaching that they put together. Mike Malone knew this zone was coming for a week. And he still couldn't figure out what to do with it last night. Hmm. And that's just Denver's one of the best teams against zones. Yeah. And so that's why it's kind of surprising that when Miami went zone and the way that they flashed it in and out, especially the second half of the game, uh, Denver struggled. And I think their only move was giving it to Nikola Jokic and letting him go basically bully ball and go to the basket. They weren't really able to generate any offense on the, on the perimeter. So what do you do, Chandler, if you're them? I mean, go, you go back to middle school and high school. To break a zone defense, you have to get the ball to the middle of the floor. And they didn't do that very often, but they were getting looks. They weren't making shots. But... The, 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 the Heat do a really good job flying around, being active, making the certain guys they want to shoot the ball, shoot the ball. They're and, annoying. Yeah, and, 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 like. and, and again, they, they, they never give up. They, it doesn't matter what the score is. This team just never puts their head down. They keep playing. They keep saying after the game, I thought it was BS when Jimmy was saying the whole regular season thing doesn't matter. Now they're all saying <laughs> they don't care any of our opinions. They don't care the TNT guys' <laughs> opinion. They are just first of four games, and I'm starting to really, really believe them. I, I really do, too. Like they do <laughs> Do not care about anything that any of us are saying, and it's quite refreshing and wonderful to see. Look, Jokic, it was a slack night for him. It wasn't a triple-double. Hmm. I don't know what to do with that. 41, 11, and 4. Um, here's the deal, though. His team is 0-3 in these playoffs when he scores 40 points or more. I know Spolster doesn't want to hear the phrase, but making Jokic a scorer, are we buying this as a strategy right now? I, I mean, he's going to get his points. He's going to get his stats. This has more to do with the other guys. Michael Porter's got to show up, right? He can't go two for eight. Can't only have five points in a critical series like this with the finals, everything on the line. Caldwell Pope, th their whole thing is their role players have been very, very good. Aaron Gordon has been aggressive and productive. Michael Porter has been productive and making shots. Last night, the role players of the Miami Heat outplayed them. Struess got off to a hot start making four threes. Duncan Robinson goes on a 10-0 run himself in the fourth quarter. Order. And the bench and the depth of the Nuggets was nowhere to be found. So as good as Jokic is, the offense is always going to go through him. He's going to be able to get his stats. But, uh, to, yeah, I like Spoh's reaction. You can't put this guy in a box. Nobody can stop him. There's not one There's not one thing to do to make other people step up. And it's, it's everything's going through him regardless. It's just whether or not he's other guys are knocking down shots and he's passing the ball or he's being more aggressive. I mean, Spoke can say that, but he absolutely called a timeout last night to yell at everybody, stop doubling. <laughs> he's, he, yeah. You absolutely can see him explaining to his players that, like, yo, let Cody Zeller be out there. It's fine. Even though Cody Zeller is getting crushed by, by Jokic. Oh, dear. So he can say that, like, yo, it's for the untrained eye. But he absolutely wants to single up Jokic as much as he can. He wants to stay hugged on those shooters. He wants to make it that game rather than Jokic picking them apart with passing. So... You know, I don't know if this is a recipe. You did all that and you barely won by three and they had a shot to win it. Uh, but this is the, the lesser of two evils with the Nuggets, for uh, sure. I want to hear from Spolstra on his new favorite phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Teams play against Jokic. You, you turn him into a scorer. You turn him into a passer, and he controls the game. You, he only had four assists tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, it's just that's the untrained eye that, that says something like that. This guy's an incredible player. You know, twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on this planet. You can't just say, oh, make him a score. <laughs> That's not how they play. They, they have so many different actions that just get you compromised. We know what you meant, Ramona. We know what you meant. Uh, he's just, you know, he's just in the finals. Um, yeah, what, what, what was different then? If, he doesn't, if we don't want to use that phrase, what was different for Miami? Well, I think they went to zone <laughs> a lot more in game two than they did in game one. And I think they, I, I mean, they, they didn't want to send as many double teams. And yes, you'd rather have Nicole Yoga go 40 and four than have him go 35 with 12, 13 <clears throat> assists or 11 assists. Yeah. Like this is a triple double king right now in the NBA. Like he, suppl he supplanted Russell Westbrook. He's on the same level with Russell Westbrook, Oscar Robertson. So we're going to treat him as such. Like the expectation is on a nightly basis, this guy's going to get a triple double. So if he's going to miss it, of course it's going to make this team look different. So when he was doing what he was doing right there, is bu that's bully ball. Like that's easy offense Whee! for him. Then he makes those threes, changes the game up. That doesn't mean Nikola Nicole Jokic to me had a bad game. Like he dominated last night. Yeah. 
It's just that the way he dominated was a little different than game one. We're so spoiled by him. Like, yeah. Oh, it was a slack. Like 40 and four is a bad game for Nicole Jokic now. It's not right. No, and again, it is a silly thing to say, but it's it's his. He's at his best when he is facilitating, and he is having these 25. 15 and 12 games and last night you could see they weren't as effective offensively when he doesn't do that say that's his fault or didn't have a great game like come on this guy dominated this guys game have to make night. shots as well guys have to make shots they have to be ready to shoot the ball sometimes these guys we get the ball last night and they were almost confused and shocked and they can't have that I fully expect Michael Porter to be ready to be to be more productive and Aaron Gordon I loved game one Aaron Gordon came out as like a madman aggressive <laughs> physical in the post yep. he didn't do that last night it's almost like they thought what we thought in this series was over. Maybe Miami gets one in game uh, in, in Miami, but it comes back and it's over in five in Denver, and that's just not the case. Uh, Nuggets great Alex English said it was going to be a sweep. I blame him for this. Uh, <laughs> Mike Malone's done a good job all year of portraying them as underdogs. Let's hear from him. No, let's talk about effort. I mean, this is NBA Finals, and we're talking about effort. That's a huge concern of mine. You know, and you guys probably thought I was just making up some storyline after game one when I said we didn't play well. We didn't play well. And tonight, you know, that the starting line lineup to start the game is 10 to 2 Miami. Start the third quarter. They scored 11 points in two minutes and 10 seconds. Um, and we just got, you know, we had guys out there that were just, whether feeling sorry for themselves for not making shots or thinking they can just turn it on or off. Um, this is not the preseason. This is not the regular season. It's not round. This is the NBA Finals, and that to me is really, really perplexing, disappointing. And now they have to go to Miami. <laughs> he might as well have said Michael Porter. I think he's talking to him in that because he is one <laughs> player on this team where, when his shot isn't going, you can see he kind of lets up a little bit. He doesn't give the effort defensively. His game is predicated on making shots and so he's right that can't be the case that can't be the case in the finals that can't be the case against the Miami Heat because they will expose you yeah I mean there's a lot of defensive breakdowns people were going viral with there's some uh, you know pin down stuff that Bruce Brown and Christian Braun blew up and Duncan Robinson was getting those layups like you pointed out earlier but yeah Michael Porter he has to be better they need him to be better to win this series it's it's crazy how quickly it went from look this isn't even really a series it's over to Yo, the Nuggets are going to have to be better or they're in trouble. But when you get the split, that's what happens. And Miami's going home. They're feeling great. Three, three, three wins left for both of these guys. And the Heat have home court for the rest of the series. And also, Malone hit it on the head. The game one, they had the shots too, Miami. They just didn't hit the shots. Yeah. When you look at last night, they hit their threes. Jimmy Butler, two threes. Kevin Love, two threes. Gabe Vincent and Max Strews, four threes. These are just shots that weren't going down in game one that he knew this was going to be a problem going forward. So they really have to clean up things uh, defensively. They have to fly around. They have to be giving up the shots that they want to give up. And it seemed like last night and even game one, the Heat are getting what they want. They just happened to make them last night. Normally, this question, I, I don't have a lot of stock in it, but I, I do today because they are going to Miami now. So more pressure in game three is on who? It's the Nuggets. I think, again, everyone's talking about this is a sweep or five. Maybe it goes to six. Now we're looking at a five-game series where I think the Heat are in the driver's seat. They're really good at home. They've been really good on the road. They've been really good in general. But this is a team now who they have all the momentum. They just got this done. They felt like they could have won game one if they happened to make shots. They made proper adjustments, and, and they're confident. And now they're going back home one-to-one -one when they could have just as easily been down 2-0. Yep. All the pressure is on Denver. They're the number one seed. They're the heavy favorite. Everyone talks about all year long, the undrafted guys from Miami, all this stuff. All the pressure is on the Denver Nuggets. Wow. They're still favorites. Nuggets, two and a half points. I'm with Chandler. Like, the, the Heat look like they can play better still. Like, Caleb Martin still hasn't showed up to this series. Whatever he's dealing with, he still hasn't showed up to this series. Max Struess was 0 of 10 in game one. They were still in that game. So... <laughs> Their shot profile, I don't know the fancy number about how many of them have been wide open, but they've had a lot of open shots. And they're, they're going to knock those down. They have too many shooters, they're going to knock those down. And if they get Tyler Hero back, and he can help just a little bit with ball handling, with dribble penetration, with playmaking, now they're an entirely different team. Now they're even more explosive than they were already in Denver. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dicey now for Denver. Should Tyler Hero be wearing suits, by the way? Uh, should we, like, enforce some sort of last-minute dress code on Tyler Hero? He should have just worn warm-ups. If, if you're on the cusp of playing, probably just wear warm-ups. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's not good. As, as, as an advocate for the Denver Nuggets uh, for the last several months, what I will say is this team has been through a lot of adversity all year. There was a point in March, I think, where, where they had a rough stretch 
uh, it, was, it was looking ugly for them at different points. Um, they've been through a lot. Ever since Jamal Murray tore his ACL, they were on the cusp of contending, get, getting to the finals. Um, so this team's been through it. I don't, I'm not going to count them out after a game two loss. Should they have won? For sure. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I think if I'm Denver, I'm still very, very confident going into game three. Yeah. Very confident. By the way, we've got we've got some scoopage, Shams. Some stuff has happened since the last time the three of us, four, there were four of us. There's Who did I just us? cut out? I think there's four. It's so rude. Maybe uh, yourself. Stuff has <laughs> happened. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, l l let's start in in Detroit. Monty Williams Ooh, has signed a massive branch. contract Get to become back. the new head coach of the Detroit Pistons. He signed a deal, six-year deal. Oof. The base salary is in the 70 million range. Higher than 70 million. But guys, this deal could go to 100 million dollars. Coaching deal. 100 million dollar coaching deal if year seven and eight are exercised. Those two are option years. So this deal could be an eight year, 100 million dollar contract. And I think when, when Detroit looked at this coaching search, they came down the stretch. Kevin Ollie and mm. Charles Lee, the associate head coach in Milwaukee. And I think the more Tom Gores, the owner, GM Troy Weaver, they looked at the marketplace. They wanted to go get an established guy, someone that can really coach Cade Cunningham. This is a young group of, of men that I think they believe Monty Williams can come in, make a big difference. We saw what he's done in the past in New Orleans and in Phoenix. Phoenix went from one of the worst teams to one of the best teams, and they had a very young nucleus that grew together. And I think they believe Monty Williams is the right guy for this job. Chandler knows a little bit about getting the bag. That is crazy. I mean, my God, and zero pressure to win right away. Like, what an opportunity, what a job. This guy's getting more than, like, Austin Reeves is going to get this summer. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a breakout year. AR-15 money. Good Lord. I mean, good for him. I think he's a great coach. I think he's a great man. I think he's going to be great for that development of that roster and that team and guys like Cade Cunningham and whoever they happen to draft this year. Um, but, wow, the highest paid coach of all time is, is pretty shocking, honestly. But, again, good for him. He's going to be there for a long time, win games, lose games. Again, he has zero pressure with this group, and he's living in Detroit with that amount of money. He is a king. That's how you do getting fired. Yeah. That's how it's You goes. sure you don't want to go into coaching? Like you, with, yeah, with shit, maybe I need that to. Just, just took over. Does, does, does Pop and Spolstra and Mike Malone have, like, those college clauses? Like, yo, somebody gets more than me, I get a dollar oh, more? Like, right. That's an insane deal. Steve Kerr's about to be a free, you know, his deal's, he's entering the last year of his deal. If you're Steve Kerr, how much do you ask for? 18? More than him. Oh, 73. That's what I want. If I'm <laughs> Steve Kerr, I am getting more than Monty Williams. I have to. There's, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You, yeah. you just lost Bob Myers and all the money you're going to pay him? I'll take some of that. Thanks we got to so pay much. someone else. Right. Got to. But, I, who, but. I, I agree with Shams. It's a great gig for him. No, no pressure. This is the gig where he will thrive in, where he can develop these young guys. Good, good roster of talent out there, and another pick that's up there. Like, uh, I, he's he's oh, gonna yeah, do well, five, right? and, he's, and he's gonna be motivated. They too. got shafted they at the lotteries, but a lot they of did. disappointment <laughs> around the Pistons for sure on lottery yeah. night. Uh, yep. The opposite of what happened in San Antonio. But I think overall, you look at it, you get Monty Williams in the mix for sure. This is this is a big, big contract, um, but. You, this is the best coach for this job. I had no to do question. a double take. I was like doing math. Like, whoa, that's yeah. okay. That's not Yeah, when bad. I heard it, I was stunned. Not the only not. coach to get a new gig. No, Frank Vogel. He will be the new head coach of the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> and this is a process. They interviewed Doc Rivers. They interviewed Nick Nurse. A couple assistant coaches, Jordy Fernandez in Sacramento. And their own incumbent, Kevin Young, also interviewed. But I think when they went along the process, having a guy that's so defensive-oriented, detail-oriented, um, I think – building his staff out the right way is going to be very important as well. But mm. uh, Frank Vogel checked a lot of boxes. And as soon as they met with them a couple weeks ago, uh, Matt Ishbia, the owner, James Jones, the ge uh, president, general manager there, other team officials, they really believe that Frank Vogel as a connector, a collaborator, that he'd be the best man for this job. And they move forward. He led this team, uh, the Lakers, right there to the 2020 NBA championship. I was there in the bubble. The job that he did, I think to, that team was one of the best defensive teams in the league, if not the best. Um, so he's proven as a head coach, and now he gets to coach uh, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. He's coached Paul, Paul George to two Eastern Conference Finals appearances. Bad. LeBron James, Anthony Davis to an NBA Finals run. So we'll see what. How he is does he supposed to Phoenix. live on that salary, though? Right. I, I don't understand. Like I mean, six six, six point two five a year in uh, <laughs> Phoenix, forty million I, less than Monty. That's crazy. I don't I don't know about the Phoenix housing market, but uh, it's got to be it's more expensive. expensive than Detroit. Oh, right? yeah. is, is Paradise it? Valley is, is expensive? expensive. Yeah, I think so. Is Probably this, live in Scottsdale. The Airbnbs there, are, you know, pretty solid price. You though. can get something nice for that deal. You can get something. Come on, now, what are you nice? You can get something nice. By the way, Eddie, as a longtime Suns fan. Of course. 
Um, how excited are you about this? I think their issues lie with their roster. Hmm. And a lot of people are wondering why they fired their coach. He was clearly the uh, hottest yeah. coaching candidate on the market <laughs> because he hit the, he got to hit the Brinks truck. Um, but, but no, they're going to need to shore up their roster. What I do think is interesting is you bring up the bubble. Frank Vogel, he beat the two finalists in, yeah. in that run. And, and it's not the same roster, obviously, but it's the same systems. And he beat them with that defense. So maybe they're eyeing towards that but I think they have a lot of questions with that roster they have to figure out what they're going to do with Chris Paul before they guarantee that money DeAndre Ayton is a hot hot name throughout the offseason as well and you know we'll see where they go but you don't need a great you don't need like a genius to tell Devin Booker and Kevin Durant yo make some shots you need a better roster around him to compete yeah. though for sure, and, and you need a coach that's going to put them in the positions, right? Like, you don't you don't really need to motivate Ra Ra, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. You need someone that's going to be detail-oriented, tell them exactly the schemes that are necessary, the rotations that are necessary. Uh, but you make a great point. Roster is the number one issue. I think what you see with Frank Vogel, what you saw with Roy Hibbert in Indiana, you saw what he did with Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee in L.A., that gives me a little bit of optimism for how he might utilize and yeah. turn DeAndre Ayton potentially into defensive force because every single center he's worked with has been an all-NBA, all-defensive type of guy. Sam Cassell. Love it. This, was, this was, I mean, you talk Good about one. assistant coaches yeah. joining teams. This was a massive, I think, coup for the Celtics to go get Sam Cassell from the 76ers. He's been Doc's longtime assistant with the Clippers, then with the Sixers, a guy that's interviewed for multiple head coaching jobs over the years. So he'll be going to be Joe Mazzullo's lead assistant in Boston mm -hmm. now. Uh, so this is this is a massive get. And, and I think when you look at this Boston Celtics team, once Ime Udoka once he departed, uh, when, the, when the incident happened before the season, this was a coaching staff in a lot of turmoil, I think, in a lot of ways, because you just a lot of moving parts. Damon Stoudemire leaves, uh, you know, a little midway through the year, goes to take a uh, Georgia Tech job, and I think they're, they're having a lot of uh, defections now. A lot of, a lot of assistant coaches on the Celtics <laughs> leaving to other teams, Houston. So now you're able to get Sam Cassell, a good assistant. I think they're going to be more active uh, trying to get better. Does that, uh, does that mean Doc's not coaching? And Do we read into that? Yeah, like, I mean... Maybe, but this this feels like Sam Cassell's been, his name's been coming up all over the place, right, for head coaching jobs. And this feels like they may have told him, hey, you're the head assistant because when this goes sideways with Missoula, <laughs> you are the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. And I think Sam Cassell's personality, the way he can relate to players, ex-player being that he was, uh, he's a great hire for them. And I do think that they're going to get off to a hot start. Me and Eddie talked about it before the really? show. I think they're going to win enough games in the regular season that Missoula is not going to be under any fire early. But just believe when he when when push comes to shove and Missoula's out, this guy's the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. Got multiple texts immediately when Shams broke this news, and essentially all of them said, "How long until Sam Cassell is right. coaching this team?" Wow! And that's what everybody's wondering, and, and that's what you do to your head coach when you hire a name like this and you tell him this is your lead assistant. It's exactly what you're and doing. Missoula knows that. He's he in the big it. office right now, and Cassell is just waiting to take it over. I guarantee you that. Well, that's a that. crappy way to go to work yeah. every day, isn't it? Put a little pressure on that guy. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't this sort of the problem with Celtics? a lot of pressure. I know, but at, the Celtics, the during the regular season, I don't think anyone cares, right? Even if they start out no. slow, hot, whatever, it's when they get to the playoffs that's the issue. So. Right. He may live the entire season and then lose it. This is a Celtics yeah. team that literally is going to be based judged on the playoffs. And we saw the second half yeah. of this year. They, they they were ebbing and flowing in the second half. We're like, in February, Jason Tatum has had by far his worst month of the season uh, besides the All-Star Game MVP. And I think they were, it's like the dog days. They were getting ready for the mm. playoffs. And then once the playoffs came, it was a, little, a lot of the same. So we'll see what Sam Cassell can bring. But listen, this guy, you're re returning a champion. He won. He was part of that 2008 championship team. There's a lot of pedigree there. And I do think he'll be a good fit for them, having another guy that can really relate to players and deal with the communication side. All right, Team USA. Let's get patriotic. This is fun because uh, this is going to be a very <laughs> interesting team that Team USA is going to put together for FIBA World Cup this upcoming summer. Um, mm. This is to qualify for the Olympics, so this is a big deal. But some of the names on this list, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Mikhail Bridges, Jalen Brunson, Bobby Portis, and another name I've heard committed, guys, Austin Reeves, pending free agent, restricted free agents this summer. I think that's a name a lot of people were surprised to see on this list. It'll be a 12-man roster. Uh, but listen, anytime you're Austin Reeves, you're going to a free agent year, Mark is going up a little bit when you're on this team. Oh, for sure. Just the idea of him getting invited to this just got him more money this summer that he's now included <laughs> into this, you know, prestigious Team USA category. It's great for him, but 
I'm assuming they're going to fill out this roster with some bigger names. And How so, dare you? I mean, How uh, dare yeah, you? Yeah, th 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 there's some more names, I think, in the next few days, weeks. Um, you know, I would expect some more all-star type of yeah. guys to be on this list. Yo, I mean, I heard Jalen Brunson. I think he should be on this team. I think he should start. I think he should get that shine. But, you know, we're getting way closer to if we don't feel the great team, we're going to lose some of these tournaments. For sure. So if we send Austin Reeves out there to start against Luka and, and whomever else. We might not be see, in the Olympics. Yeah, I mean. we, we, we might miss our spot. But I don't like this. I was, looking at the, right now. I was looking at the comments on a sideline sources when they posted this yesterday. <laughs> A lot of people not happy about the fact that Bobby Portis might be representing our country. Yes. <laughs> we're bringing bench players to Team USA now? That's where we're at with it now. Jeez. I would just say there's some former, uh, there's some former and current All-Stars that are uh, you know, likely to be a part of this team as well. One name actually playing in the finals that they're waiting to get uh, approval for uh, if, if he's, if he's going to commit. Bam Adebayo. That's a name that they have an invite out to. I think Bam's going to wait to see how this finals run goes, is my sense, um, before he gives Team USA a decision. Oh, you guys are just being negative. Uh, but I get it. I totally get it. We're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, former Denver Nugget, Kenyon Martin joins the show. And maybe he's feeling pressure or nerves. Doesn't look like it. He said, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, and run it back. That's right. Our next guest. Two finals with the Nets. Seven seasons with the Nuggets. It's Kenyon Martin, who, by the way, welcome to the show. And secondly, you have opinions on Team USA? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, man. <laughs> man. Like, Bobby Portis is a solid NBA player. But I just look at the past, man, and the things, decisions USA basketball made before. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you know, Bobby, Bobby Portis is plate, but I just don't. I think there's other players that's, that could suit USA basketball a little better. I mean, sure, if they're going to throw Bobby out there, listen, if they're going to throw Bobby Portis in that show, I want to see KJ on that. Oh, I think you know, facts. That's a good dad that's right there. That's a great there. dad right there. Dad right there. I want to get to the, to the series, uh, especially after last night's win for Miami. But Chandler brought to our attention this morning that. You are responsible for the hardest foul he's ever felt. Is that? Do you remember this? Ken, you probably don't even remember it. <laughs> it was eight. Hey, no, take it, didn't take, hope you didn't take it personal, Chandler. He's probably one of many. Uh, my tailbone is still my tailbone is still bruised. What Kimmy. happened? You, like, I drove. Oh, I drove. Man. I drove baseline. And he got. I think it was a flagrant one, and it was so it wasn't clearly it wasn't too bad. But yeah, I'd never been put on my ass like that. <laughs> Kenyon's like I don't remember. You I probably understand, was Kenyon. a result of somebody else out there talking yeah. shit, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> All right, That's let's, okay, what let's, is the result of. <laughs> Miami got the big win last night. I, I know some people thought it would be a sweep. Uh, it's not a sweep. You feeling any nerves yeah. for Denver? Do you feel like Miami's got the upper hand now? What, what did last night's game do for you? Um, first of all, I didn't expect Miami to win game one, first and foremost. Hmm. Let's just start there. Just, just coming off the tough series, seven games, Denver at home waiting, playing an altitude, a determined team in Denver. I just didn't expect them to. Um, win game one. But game two, I expected adjustments like Miami did. Um, they showed a lot. They showed a lot going up big, going up like 11, 12, whatever it was. Then Denver coming back, going up 15. Showed a lot of grit. Um, it's the finals. Um, I expect them to show up and play hard. Uh, it's the Miami Heat culture. Um, if you expected anything different from them, then you shouldn't um, be paying attention. Um, but they was going to bring it. Uh, it's just who they are. They was going to fight and claw and scratch. Um, it's a good series. And like we all know, uh, playoffs, the series don't start until somebody wins on the road. Um, so I, I guess we have a series now. <laughs> <laughs> Kenyon, the Nuggets hadn't lost at home until last night. You played in Denver with that altitude. What was it like for you and how hard do you think it is to adjust to that altitude for opposing players and how hard it was, was it for you? That first game, it was rough. You know what I'm saying? Me being there seven years, um, I, I I was adjusted, you know what I'm saying? So it really didn't affect me. But when you go on the road and come back that first quarter, maybe. But, yeah, that first game of a playoff series, teams are hype. Um, and Denver has used it to their advantage throughout the playoffs and throughout the regular season. But it's tough, man. It's tough. Everything that's on the line, your adrenaline, emotions, all that plays a factor in, in your breathing. So, But I think Miami was able to get – um, a couple of days there. I think them 
having three days in between the games instead of two, um, I think was huge. Uh, yeah, I think if it was only been a couple of days, then it would still show some residual effects. But, you know, they work down in Miami, so they probably got – Versa climbers and all kind of stuff in the locker room to get ready. <laughs> yeah, Kenyon, there doesn't seem to be a right answer on how to defend or how to stop Jokic. Um, what, how would you attack that matchup if that was who you had, you know, in this series? Same thing like KG said a few weeks ago, man. I'm just going to rough him up from the beginning. Um, <laughs> jump from the ball, from the tip. If he win the tip, he running down. I'm going to bump him, hold him, grab him. Might push him down, might knock him down. I might have to take one. I'm saying, um, just let him know what kind of day it's going to be. You know? <laughs> but a lot of people, like, he, he's, he's a hell of a talent. You no, know, The league hasn't seen anyone that size and skill set to, um, to date. But for me, people just let him play freely a lot and not bothering the ball and not making him do things he's probably not as comfortable as doing. But he's proven that he's worked on his game. He's proven that he's willing to do different things in order to make to, to affect the game. And I think the way Miami played the last night, they made him a score. Um, they didn't let him have both. So I think if you give him both, then you're going to have hell. Yeah. So if you, it, 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 either he's a passer or a score. But for me personally, the way I would have guarded him, um, first and foremost, no double team. I don't, I don't, I don't do the double team <laughs> thing. Um, <laughs> no, just bothering the ball. No, just bothering the ball, man, much as possible. He's expo- he exposes the ball a lot, I think. And these people, they're so afraid of fouls and situations and things like that. But you got to try things when you're guarding a great guy like that. You got to try things. You got to implement what you think going to work. Well, try to implement what you think going to work. But he's a, he's a tall task. No pun intended. Yeah, see, <laughs> I guess the issue now is would the refs even allow you be as physical as you would want to be in a matchup like this? Would, would, how can you do that nowadays with the rule change and the suspensions and the fines and everything that comes with that now? Oh, Take as them, you know, eat Chandler, them. I don't, that, that, that didn't, that didn't <laughs> register in my, in my approach. Fines, suspensions, and yeah. flagrants didn't, that didn't register my <laughs> approach, man. But the way I see them, Guarding, letting them play now in the playoffs. Oh, I could do that with, and keep it where it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're letting them play physical in the post. They're letting them b- bump him, rough him up, and do certain things. Uh, even when Jimmy is guarding him, they letting Jimmy get away with certain things. Hmm. So smaller guys typically get away with certain things when they guard bigger guys. You just can't make it over the top and make it as obvious as. But I, you know, I'm, I'm a crafty vet, man. I know tricks and <laughs> ways to get y'all ways to get you off the spot. I'm going to pull a chair on him a few times. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to mix it up. I'm not going to give him the same look. I'm going to front him. I'm going to three-quarter him. I'm going to meet him early. I'm going to force him out. It's just a lot of different ways that you can affect him and not let him be comfortable. But he's, man, he's, a, he's a hell of a talent, man. Um, I enjoy watching him play. <laughs> Kmart, you obviously had a great one, run with Melo in Denver. He wears the same number as Jokic. Do you think the organization should retire to 15 for both guys? What do you think is going to happen there? I I would like for them to, but the reality of it is um, people are overly sensitive and people forget about the work that Melo did there. So I don't think that the organization would do that on how things ended as well, um, which is very unfortunate because um, we all know that Melo should have won rookie. Carmelo Anthony should have won rookie of the year. Um, it's just unfortunate. I, I don't think that will happen, being that Nikola is two-time MVP, uh, potentially going to win him a few more <laughs> before he's done, um, <laughs> on the verge of winning the championship. So we'll see. But uh, it's unfortunate that that, that Melo's number won't be in the rafters. Um, I just don't think it happens. Who could have thought a second-round draft pick would be the one? Um, 2006, let's hey. go back. I, right? Strang- like, stranger things have happened. Stranger retired. things have happened, B. Come okay, on. look, here's the deal. You were suspended in 06 for conduct detrimental to the team. <laughs> let's uh, let's go through that. What happened, and how's your relationship with George Carl? <laughs> can, I, can I, can I, am I allowed to speak freely no, on here? Absolutely. Please do. This is your safe zone. Well, well George Carl, <laughs> first, first and foremost. <laughs> I know it's early in the morning, <laughs> seven o'clock, but hey, that's just the set. That's the, that, that's just the way I feel about George Carl. Um, I'm sweating. For yes. two, 
<laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, I, no love lost at all, as you can see. Fair no enough. Yeah, no, what happened was we were, I was, everybody knows I was going through knee problems in Denver. Uh, I had two micro fracture surgeries. I had my patella repaired in Denver. And I was having knee problems before the playoffs. Came up with an agreement. I was going to sit out a few games and get ready for the playoffs. George started Francisco Elson in my spot. Um, last few games go to him before the playoffs. I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to start. He said he's going to start Francisco. He want to reward him. Who the fuck's want to reward an NBA player? Um, <laughs> And so we lose game one against the Clippers. We go game two. I tell them we lost game one. Back in the starting lineup. Uh, I'm going to start Francisco again. Now, you, now you're messing with me. Now you're playing with me. <laughs> so we start the game. I played seven minutes in the first half. Like three minutes. Yeah, maybe seven game minutes. And we was down at half. So towards the end of the second quarter, he put – Greg Buckner in for Eddie Nahara. Me and Eddie play the same position. So I'm like, time going. I'm like, what is three minutes, two minutes, minute hit? I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going back in. So by this time, I'm steaming. Like, if they could have did the old school cartoon illustration on me with the smoke coming out my ears and my nose and my face beat red, that that would have been what they had on me on the bench in that moment. So I was the first person off the bench. I'm going to the locker room. Uh-oh. The team come in. And tell them how the, how the coaches meet in the hallway in L.A. before mm-hmm. they come in the locker room. I go right in the hallway while they're in there talking. I, go, <laughs> I step in between the coaches and I let Oh, no. I his, oh, no, I threatened his life and everything. I threatened his well-being. <laughs> like, I told him, and you lucky is free well choked for P.J. Carlissa. Because had, had that never happened, I would have beat George Carl up that day. Not choking, I would have beat him up. Like, no question uh, about it. it would, uh, that would have, my NBA career that day would have been had P.J. Carlissa never got choked. Wow. All right, like, I, then, I can yes. see that. I can so see now why I got so suspended. George wanted the team to suspend me. The team told George, you need to do it. Oh. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't. Of course he did. They had the uh, word got back through. Yeah. Yeah, that I was for the rest of the playoffs. He, but, he couldn't even put you on it? Uh, man, listen, man. At that moment. <laughs> he's not going to put Yeah, he's not. I, I don't no. know how to no. coach either. Oh, no. In that moment, it took a whole summer for me to be able to sit down in front of him. And before the next and before the next season, we had a sit down, and we came. I, he didn't have much to say. I told him, "You coach your team. You don't you don't say nothing to me about me to me, and we're gonna be all right. The first time you do, I'm on your ass. So, oh no, George can say nothing to me. Like he couldn't. He he coached his team. He didn't have anything to say to me. And the, and Glad it's unfortunate I that I was I wasn't able to get out of there. Um, but. They used it, and they knew that they didn't have to worry about me doing my job. So I'm going to show up and play no matter what, no matter what my feelings are towards teammates, coaching staff, management, no matter what. I'm going to show up and do my job. And and they knew that. So that was the – no, that was the thing. But, yeah, I don't like George Carl to this day. And, <laughs> like, and I – we need a T-shirt. Yeah, right. I'm glad I asked. Uh, sorry, Shams, <laughs> I didn't mean to take over your question. Go ahead. Oh no, you know, no, no, no. everybody know it. And any Can. chance I get to put George on the burner, on the grill, <laughs> I put his ass on the grill every single time. I was at home minding my business when he wrote that book. So, <laughs> thank you. Mm. Kenyon, you played four seasons in Jersey, two finals runs. You guys lose to the Spurs, yeah. the Lakers. Uh, you guys obviously on the cusp, you, Jake Kidd, RJ. What do you remember most about those finals runs? And is there anything you have regret over during those two finals? Runs? Like anything that keeps you up at night? What could have went differently for you guys to win in either of those years? Hmm. Well, the first year, we didn't have a chance. Like, <laughs> I, I, I ain't no regrets about that. So we ran up into that buzz, so um, Shaq and Kobe. So that was that – was, First young team, first time on that stage. They had been there. Uh, yeah, we just was trying to make it competitive, to be honest. Um, yeah, we got off to – lost the first two, then lost game three at home. It was it was a matter of not getting swept, and that didn't work. Um, the second year San Antonio, we 
we we split the first two games. This one of the series was two three two, I believe. Um, we split the first two in San Antonio, and they came and got two on our home floor. Um, we could have got we one of those games is probably the biggest regret. And if you go look at, so I don't know if you know this. Um, I don't know if people really paid attention to it. But I was three for 23 in game six of the final. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. That's not good. And I think I'm, and I might have made my first two shots in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a long night. Oh, that's a horrible night. <laughs> Listen, and, but you know, I don't make excuses, man. I had to, well, it's years later now. I could, I was sick before the game. Don't, I didn't make excuses. I went out there and played my ass off. So I gave my all I could, but hey, that thing wouldn't go in. And, and the fact that I got 23 shots up, is the most impressive part. Because <laughs> they, they kept passing me the ball, man. I would have been like, listen, dude, sorry. <laughs> We're in the finals, dude. We're in the finals, man. Listen, you can't keep throwing this thing to you, man. I understand who you are. I understand what you mean to us. But, hey, we got to find a different way, man. <clears throat> yeah, Kmart, you mentioned that buzz hall <laughs> of Shaq and Kobe. I personally think 01, 02 Shaq is the most dominant player of all time. What was that like? Absolutely. What was that like uh, battling that monster? Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> impossible. It was it was the you going up to the school and playing basketball with your kids kind of a situation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure y'all seen this picture that's floating out there where he's dunking the ball and all five of us yeah, all five it's, of us. it's in the frame. Yeah. Yeah, when all how you get all five teammates in one frame of one person. It's and, and Aaron Williams holding on his jersey. I'm thinking he's gonna cock the ball. I'm trying to swipe from behind. He got J. Kidd over here. He got it's just you know, it's, yeah. And that picture was it was how the series went. Like, that picture told the whole story. <laughs> you mentioned your son earlier, KJ, oh. Kenya Martin Jr. He, he's, he's got a good thing going over there with the Rockets. He continues to grow. Uh, what does he do better than you in your career? Does he do anything better than you thus far? No. Nah. Shoot it, handle it. Um, <laughs> he deals with people better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he's taken a lot, man, from my my time, and he's listened and and he's applied it, man. He, he shoots the ball better. Like I tell people all the time, overall, KJ is a better basketball player than I am. And you, and he you, has to be well, because he has to be. And, and you pass that jumping down, and you pass that jumping down. <laughs> Luckily for him, he he jump out the gym oh, yeah, like you. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, and he's competitive, man. He people like he's competitive as they come. He has a high basketball IQ. Um, but his best attribute is KJ listens. Hmm. Like he listens and he uh, he listens and he processes and he's been that way since he's been in high school. Man. So um, all the gifts, all y'all see the dunk in the blocks, the growth is predicated. That, that, that is what it is. But his ability to listen to me and listen to people that's going to help him, um, I praise him all the time about just that aspect of because that's so hard to get these days for a guy to buy into what you're saying. Um, yeah, I just, it's, it's one of those situations where I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be his dad in that regard. But I love watching him play basketball, man. He, he competes at the highest level each and every time he steps on the floor. Um, you, you don't have to worry about if KJ is going to show up and do his job. Kenyon, I mean, playing time was definitely something that KJ's had to go and earn this year. He has a breakout year. Are you happy, encouraged of the direction of the Rockets right now? Do you think the Ime Udoka hire was a good good new step for them? I do. I do. I like um, Ime's background, for one. Coaching tree, coaching plan, plan for pop, coaching under pop. Uh, I think that goes a long way, man. Um, and within, to just look at the history of assistants that's left pop. So how can I not be encouraged by that? And who KJ is as a basketball player, I think Ime will appreciate I don't think people before appreciated what KJ did and how KJ approached the game. And I think KJ fits what M.A. is going to try to do. Um, tough nose, hard nose, play the right way, go out and get it done, kind of an attitude, which I see of him. He has a, seri he has a serious side, which I think is going to play a big factor in Houston. Um, they got to switch that roster up 
obviously. Um, yeah, but I'm excited for KJ and what MA can do for KJ. Speaking of that uh, roster, do you have any interest in James Harden coming back to Houston to play with KJ, or you don't don't like that? No, 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 no. <laughs> like James, James, James has made his mark in his league. He's done what he had to do. I just don't think you putting him in a situation where your core guys that you are depending on are 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Because um, you stunt their growth and their development. Um, if you're depending on Jalen to be this superstar that you were trying to put him in role to be, then I think it's going to stunt Jalen's growth and Jabari and Sangoon and those kids who you drafted first round high, who you feature, who you depend on. I just think James, the way he demands the ball and his style of play right now, um, will stunt their growth, and I don't think that's fair to them. Yeah. But I don't, I don't sign the checks. So. <laughs> I think that welcome and. back dinner is going to be fun now. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. So look, KJ lost to Mac McClung in the slam dunk contest at the time. When McClung was named to it, there was a lot of argument, at least amongst the four of us anyways, that a non-NBA player, what is this? How does it work? What were your thoughts on it? And now having seen it with hindsight, what'd you think? No, it is what it is. It's all for hype and, and for ratings. The kid can just get off the floor, man. He's He's been doing those same dunks for five years. So I'm not, I wasn't surprised. Um, I don't, the hype of, jumping on the bandwagon like he shouldn't have been there and I don't care man <laughs> other guys that was there could have did something different including my son but no nah, the kid did what he had to do man like I don't take nothing from him I'm not the the, the player or the, the dad or the fan be like oh why is he there he only played two NBA games yeah he got fresh legs of course he ain't played no minutes so yeah he's gonna be able to jump all over the damn gym <laughs> you know what I'm saying? that's obvious <laughs> Like, but he's been practicing those. If you go look at his reels for over the years, from when he was in high school to going to Georgetown and the fifth school that he transferred to after he left Georgetown, like, I don't. The kid, 30. <laughs> and, <laughs> listen, so I, listen, man, he's been around for a while, man, but I'm just, listen. He did what he had to do, man, to make a name for himself. Um, it made it tricky to get him into the dunk contest, of course, but, hey, man, hey. Did what he had to do, man. He got his check, got his trophy, made it somewhat of more of a name for himself. So, hey. Fair enough. My hat's off to him, man. Just no respect for the kid. <laughs> Came on, last question. I know you, you obviously played in a much more physical era of the league. The mm -hmm. power forward position actually existed. It did power forward stuff. Uh, do, do you feel like there's anybody in the league today that <laughs> plays similar to the way you do? And do you feel like today's league is soft? Oh, dear. The answer to that first question is no. No one <laughs> plays like him um, at all. That's just so. If anybody's close is is Junior. If anybody is resemble is, is KJ, but he does it his own way. Um, I I don't think the league is soft. I think it's soft players. <laughs> well, that's worse. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I just think it's all players. That's all. It's just guys don't play through injury. Guys don't play through plays. Guys don't. It's just no no resistance at time for the opposition. And that's, you get hit, you lay on the ground, and nothing's wrong with you. I hate that's that. That's all those show signs of weakness <laughs> and softness to me. Like, I, I when, you know, just, you, you, when I play, you never want to give someone the thought that they had an advantage on. Hmm. And you laying on the ground for two minutes gives me the thought that I have an advantage <laughs> over. <laughs> no matter how you got down there, if you, whatever it happens, the, my thought is that you didn't get hit that hard for one. <laughs> and you saw this newborn baby boo-boo. <laughs> there it is. Uh, there, <laughs> Kenyon. Always a pleasure to catch up. Never disappointing. Uh, provided us with many laughs and uh, hmm. some open mouth moments. Uh, appreciate it. <laughs> always, a always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be back uh, to wrap things run up. Get in on the NBA Finals action. Great from the first tip with FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 bucks back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, there's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. So download the app, bet on the NBA Finals today. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. 
Fit or break. Oh, yeah. Look, you know what? Here Bruce Brown is uh, probably over the course of the regular season became one of my faves. And these are the reasons why. This is from game one, I believe. It's he's, This is his thing. I like this. He's a cowboy. I feel like this isn't a show. This is no. actually how he dresses. That's him. It's some, some good Carhartt. I love a good Carhartt vest. I love a good Carhartt Stays yeah. warm. I'm cool with that. Is that a vest, though? That's a vest. Oh, for yeah. sure. Offer vest? They say don't trust people with vests on, but I don't know if that Wait, who's they and what? That's, that's a phrase? That's, 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 that's a saying? That's a saying? I didn't know that rumor. I don't know where I heard it, but I heard it. Don't trust people in cowboy boots. Ooh! This is my like, it's like Jokic rubbed off on him a little yeah. bit. That's something that Chandler would definitely yeah, rock I like this. I like the fade. Do not hate it. I don't like sunglasses inside. I just, I don't. Why do people do it, Chandler? You're you're a Hollywood type. Don't you feel douchey if you wear sunglasses Yeah, it is a very douchey move. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. Sometimes Unless you, you're old, right? If you're like Jack Nicholson, you get a pass. Sure. Sometimes that's you, it. Fine. Or Stevie Wonder. Even yeah. though there are theories that's, of that. I, I, Jeff I like that. I like, that's clean. I like the tucked in look too. Basic yeah. and I like it. It's, it's like look. a rope belt. Matching okay. shoes. It's a shoestring belt. What's going on? I like the jeans. Though. I, I like, like the jeans. Shoes. I thought it was like a sweater tied around the waist at first, but you're right. That is just like a string belt. Right it looks like you, Chandler, except for he tried. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, can we, we <laughs> got to put Chandler's Today outfit. This is yeah, it. Yeah. Ooh. I like this. I like this. Oh, I hate it. I hate, I hate this. it. <laughs> Sunglasses again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's I the shades like it. you don't like. OK. No, it's the purple. The whole, the yeah. pulse, that's a lot of purple. Mm-mm. Purple. Yeah, <laughs> did you wear this after game one, after they beat the Lakers? This is game just, two. Oh, this no, this is game game two. Yeah. I always think the when these guys wear these ridiculous outfits they and lose. they lose, they I have to same. walk out wearing this. They have to put that back on later. I think yeah. that every single time. They and gotta, I thought that last night. I was like, you better. Oh, yeah. you didn't. And you didn't. <laughs> I like guys, that. Kenyon Martin um, gave us enough for a, lot, a lifetime. Yeah, yeah a lifetime. too um, good. Next time Retire somebody says, that. "May I speak freely?" Imagine we if have he to can. say no. Say yes. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Okay, that's gonna do it for us. We'll be back here bright and early tomorrow morning from the West Coast. Chandler Pants. Yes. Never. Okay. Nope. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>